and punters, welcome back to the Best Sports Betting Podcast. We missed last week's episode, so we do apologize. We had a lot going on last week, but we are back this week, and we're going to be chatting about some of the Premier League, some of the, the golf action, of course, the rugby championship where South Africa has been struggling, <laughs> and uh, all things sports related, as well as a, a quick chat about Pure Wet, which we, we popped up a video uh, online about yesterday. With me as always is Simon. Simon, let's jump straight into the EPL. I think it's a good place to start. Mm, um, sure. Pretty pretty interesting weekend. Couple of upsets there. Couple of were. results for the, 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 the Minos. Yeah, I mean, sure. I imagine Man United losing to Aston Villa was a, a real coupon buster. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, and I mean, <clears throat> I've, I must say I've continued to be impressed with Brentford. Um, they, they really do look quite a resilient side. Um, and I mean, even even so early in the season, I think I think it's fair to say that they've got a pretty good chance of, of surviving relegation. They managed a, a three-goal draw um, at home against Liverpool. Ab- absolute cracking result there. And, and just touching on that, like I I've, I've speak about this um, every now and again with Bedford. Obviously, Hollywood Bets are their sponsor. And wow, what a deal they've got there. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's such an amazing... Um, I don't want to say stroke of luck, but you know, strategic partnership that they managed to partner with the one team that's kind of making waves in the in yes. the EPL, and they're just getting them getting so much exposure. Uh, they've also got the Hollywood Absolutely. bets. Hollywood bets UK is launched uh, well, a while ago, over a year ago actually. Um, so, so hopefully that's doing them some some good business overseas. But it's it's great to see them doing well. Uh, that three three result, bit of a I don't know. I, I feel Liverpool could, maybe could have could have edged that one. Yeah, I think so. Look, I, I think that Brentford did, did really well to um, to put three past Liverpool's difficult at, at any point, and I think they played really, really well. But I think I think Liverpool were maybe a little bit un, unlucky, not, unlucky not to not to win that game. But yeah, just going back to what you said um, uh, with regards to Hollywood bets. I mean, it's fantastic that you you have a team like Brentford as you move into the UK market um, to just kind of give you some buoyancy and really kind of put your name out there. So we wish them all the best. I really hope that they can um, they can really make a name for themselves um, um, in, in the UK market. Yeah, and hopefully it's onwards and upwards. We, sh- we should be seeing them next season as well. I know it's still very early days, but anyway, there's also the, the Chelsea City match. I thought that was going to be a, a cracker of a game. Um, I, I fancied a draw there. Uh, I know we didn't have a podcast last week, but... That's where I would have gone. City picking up a 1-0 win there. I, I watched, I want to say, like 60% of the match. It, it wasn't that exciting for... Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. I mean, we had, no, we had no podcast last week, but I'll, I'll, I'll admit quite openly that I would have definitely chipped till tipped Chelsea to win that match. Um, I, so I think we dodged a bullet there by by not uh, not not giving that out. But I, I must say, I really fancy Chelsea there. Um, and uh, the fact that, that, that Man City managed to um, stop them from having more than just a couple shots on goal as well it was really, really impressive. So I must say, I did not see Man City keeping a clean sheet in that match. No, um, no. Especially with the way Chelsea's been playing and at Stamford Bridge. I mean, I, I, so I must say that was, even though it was literally a coin flip game, I think it was 17-10 aside, I, I would have, I would have uh, definitely favoured Chelsea in that one. And then there was the North London derby where I would have gone with Arsenal. I actually did take Arsenal on some bets, but those bets were in multis and they ended up being losers anyway. So no single bets. But uh, first half blitz, putting away Spurs 3-1. Uh, I don't want to say Arsenal back in the swing of things, but a Hello. pretty big result. Are you there, Simon? Yes, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I asked you. <laughs> yeah, so I was just saying that uh, the, the... Oh, hello. I don't know what's... Sorry, I don't know what's going on with my sounds. Um, Just cut out for a second. Yeah, the I was I was saying the the Arsenal three one win over Spurs was quite a quite a big result. That first half blitz. It putting, was. Putting I mean, it's. I mean, what a what a bounce back into form for for Arsenal as well. I mean, I, I quite enjoyed seeing Michael uh, Michael Arteta. I mean, he's normally such a sort of stoic character. But I mean, he nearly banged his head on the dugout when he was celebrating that win over the Spurs. It was, oh, well, it's it was... probably giving him a, a couple more games to play. He should have been fired a while ago. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, he was on death row. So, and I mean, one interesting takeaway I just think from from the first, you know, five or six games of the season. I mean, Harry Kane has yet to score a goal, which is just quite something. I mean, he's and he's only had a handful of of, of successful shots on goal, even. So it's really been interesting. He's really having a serious dip in form, and I think if this he comes right. Are really going to struggle. Yeah, he's been in a rut for a while, uh, you know. Just mm. looking at, at the Euros, uh, where he was, you know, touted yeah. as the savior for every, you know, for England, he was going to be scoring. You know, yeah, this I mean, and that. He was, and tipped, he was tipped as top goal scorer. Which yeah, is, yeah. Didn't didn't really uh, do that much, but uh, anyway, 
Uh, so Arsenal, I'm not, I'm not too keen to start backing them. I still think Arteta should be fired. Uh, I think that uh, he's, he's, he's just way out of his depth playing or you know managing it at, at this agree. level. And uh, then Newcastle picking up a draw. Yeah, no, not a bad result. Not a bad result. Um, yeah, they, they. I, I must say, I always, I always, it's one game I always, always try and see um, every every weekend, and um, they, <laughs> they, they entertain me um, no end. And I, I think, I think that uh, I, I don't know. I think, I think maybe a thirteenth, fourteenth of season is is possibly a realistic expectation for them. Yeah, uh, hopefully, a thirteenth, fourteenth, and three points above relegation is probably how it's gonna, <laughs> yeah. how it's gonna t- t- um, unfold this uh, at the end of the season. But let's chat about uh, another disappointing kind of weekend of rugby for South Africa. South Africa just not doing well in the rugby championship. We spoke about it two weeks ago, where we we thought I thought South Africa were gonna go, were gonna win the second match against Australia, but I thought the plus was too high. Uh, I fancied Australia there. That came in. Uh, then South Africa last week losing by two points. Was it 26, 28? Yes. No, no, no. Sorry. No, no. It was, oh, I, I can't remember the exact scoreline, but I think it was much lower than that, actually. Uh, but kind of flattering, flattering for the box, kicking away at the end of the game there. I just, I don't know what's going on at the moment. Uh, SA Rugby is in a bit of a mess. Yeah, I mean, I think, look, it was it was never going to be difficult to, to, to play better than we did um, the previous week, which was, which was the second test against Australia. But I still think the Springboks, um, I mean, they look a bit one-dimensional to me. Very I mean, one-dimensional, yeah. Yeah, they, I mean, their strategy of kind of box kicking, um, you know, led by Fuff, um, I think it's I think it's effective, but, um, you know, you just need a few bad bounces of the ball and suddenly it kind of, it's, it looks really short-sighted to, to be giving away a possession so easily. Um, I mean, we went into that second half um, a, only two points down, and I think that we, I think that that was quite flattering, and we did play quite a bit better in the second half. We won more lineouts and scrums, but I also don't think New Zealand were were playing like their usual mm. selves, and, and I must say that worries me a bit because, you know, there was very little of their sort of normal grubber and chase played on the sidelines, and I get the feeling that they were sort of sussing us out. Um, yes, to to to, and, lay, to lay the beat down on us this week. Yeah, just <laughs> watching us kicking game, maybe thinking, you know, strategizing around how they can stop it. Because as I said, it's you know, it 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 it, it looks quite simplistic, but it is quite hard to play against. But I just think that I've got a I've got a bad feeling going uh, yeah. going into this week. Yeah, I must we'll, be honest. We'll get to that a bit later in the podcast. Is uh, mm. I think we we probably both going to be on the same side there. Uh, then the Russian GP. I know that guys were waxing lyrical. Hamilton picked up. A win but uh, was it Verstappen started in 20th or, or something like that I didn't actually watch or follow it I just uh, picked up on some yeah post, yeah that's right and, tweets. And, <laughs> yeah I mean Hamilton's 100th um, Grand Prix yes. win which is which is obviously a big deal I mean he's more than more than surpassed um, all, all the greatest drivers now so it's um, it's it's quite something I mean he you know, he actually started hinting at retirement now, but um, I mean, my guess is he'll go for probably yeah, at least his, one. Or his ego is too big to retire. Yeah, one or two more seasons. I mean, he is he is still pretty young, and he obviously, with that win, takes the the championship lead back from from Max Verstappen, who ended up finishing finishing second. But just looking at that race, I mean, it was a, it was quite a it was a classic Hamilton victory. Um, in the sense that he he used the wet conditions to his advantage, so he really um, he really really thrives in, in rain, um, and he handles it better than anyone else. So, with five laps to go, um, the rain came down quite heavily and it was kind of threatening to the whole the whole race. But finally, with five laps to go, the rain came down, and then Lando Norris, who was who was leading, started sliding all over the track. So he was kind of like a sitting duck, um, and Hamilton was overtake uh, was able to overtake him, and he actually came came up from p4 so um you know he, he made up three positions to win that race so it was it really was a it was a good win for him yeah just um more of more of the same so yeah <laughs> really, to be honest that's why i think he'll retire once he you know give him a couple of years when he starts he starts losing um mm. when he's not in the championship race i think that might be be a time for him to buy out uh, bow out rather uh, yeah on, on the top of his game I'd, i wouldn't want to see him race you know hang around like we've we've seen with a couple of the other drivers uh, yeah, you know, who, who are good enough to stay in, in in Formula One, but just aren't quite good enough to to win. And then uh, the Ryder Cup, Simon, and I know you fancied uh, Europe. We spoke about it before before the tournament. So I I fancied I fancied the States. I didn't have any bets, but uh, very disappointing for for Europe. They're getting absolutely smashed. I think uh, I mentioned to you that it was pretty much over by the f- after the first day, where I think Europe were up by like five points or so. Or yeah, something. I mean, wow, yeah. 
I, it was, it, I mean, it was an historical margin. They won by, US won by 19 points to 10 um, on, on Sunday. So, look, I think, I think, um, I wouldn't say I necessarily fancied the, the Europeans to win. They, look, I think it was always, it was, they were always going to have to be their best and, and, and rely on the Americans kind of underperforming. I did maybe see a little bit of value in the odds early on. But, you know, I mean, look, when you've got eight of the 10, the world's top 10 players in your team, um, you're obviously going to be a force to be reckoned with. I mean, that is quite incredible. Um, I think also, I mean, I, don't, I think you can't take anything away from from their captain, mm. Steve Stricker. I mean, he made some very good decisions in, in the player pairings too. But um, yeah, I must say, I love this event. I always I always love match play format, um, especially the foursomes, which is, you know, the alternative alternate shots. And um, obviously, great to see see the crowds back. Um, and yeah, it was there was a lot of fun. I mean, uh, when the matches were done, uh, Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth were shotgunning beers on the tee box, <laughs> while people, you know, they were, they were thrown into the crowd, and it was it was a, a raucous atmosphere, Big party. As, it, as it should be. Yeah, um, yeah. And looking at looking ahead, I mean, you know, the Ryder Cup's been been predominantly won by the home team. Um, but I, I must say, I, I've, I have a strong suspicion that that uh, I mean, bar maybe a huge dip in form from the from the American team, um, they'll probably go into Rome uh, 2023, which is obviously going to be hosted by Europe um, as, as favourites. Um, I would think that um, like the only the only way that that Europe will beat America um, in 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 the next short while would be to set up a kind of course that would sort of you know yeah heavily let, favour them. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, kind of uh, stop bombers like you know Deshambo and and Johnson, who, who like kind of take hazards out of play by just hitting the ball over oh, them. Yeah. They, they would really need to, um, really need to kind of try and take those those shots out of play. I mean, but speaking of speaking of DJ, I mean, he played he played brilliantly in the Ryder Cup. I mean, he hasn't done a lot since winning the Masters, and he was he was excellent. He he won all his matches. He's five and zero. Oh. Um, so he got a perfect score. So it was good to see him playing well again because he's kind of been. I mean, he's he's obviously always there and thereabouts, but he's been a little bit iffy of late. So it was good to see him in, in back in good form. And then uh, we spoke about uh, dropping our kind of NFL coverage from from the podcast. Just a a bit too much going on there, especially for for us to keep track of. Mm. Um, I don't know if you've been you've been have you been keeping track? Have you been struggling to keep keep track? I know what, while you were in America, it was a lot easier for you to, yeah. to follow well, that's, the games that's... at normal times of the day. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you know, it's 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 you know, if you want to watch, uh, you know, the early the early kickoffs are okay because that's what, what's that's what normally seven p.m. our time. But then uh, that's you know anything after that, it's much later. Yeah, so it's sort of so, yeah, 10, it's, 11, it's, the, the, the it's, normal or well, not the early ones, but the the, the rest of the kickoffs and then the late kickoffs, of course. Yes, yes. So it, it does become very tricky. So yeah, I think I think it's um yeah you, know, you know with not being able to kind of keep such a close eye on it, I think we'll uh, we'll we'll put that one to into retirement. But um, I think it'll be nice to obviously preview uh, the Super Bowl and like big big NFL events like that. Um, but yeah, and if Simon has a has a bet, I'm sure he'd he'd share it with us anyway. Oh so. yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's jump into uh, before we get to to our. Premier League preview. I think we should have a quick look at the South Africa versus New Zealand match coming up, which we we, mm. we spoke about some of the previous results and how, how the box have been struggling. Uh, the the line there is around nine and a half. I think it depends where you're going to be shopping for your odds. Uh, here we got ten and a half over at Betway. I think South Africa is going to be in a lot of trouble in this match. Uh, I think that scoreline was flattering last week, and I think New Zealand are going to cover anything, anything from about ten. Uh, ten and a half is a little high for me, but I'll still take the ten and a half uh, rather than take the plus. Yeah, it's yeah. A little, so, little, little crazy, but yeah. Yeah, I must say, as soon as this line came out, I was kind of annoyed that the bookmakers have barely moved their numbers after last week's obviously you know the narrow two point win for for the All Blacks because they were favored by 12 there. So, you know, I was hoping to see that line come down under 10 points because um, I think that's kind of the magic number here and and then back New Zealand on the minus. But, you know, obviously South Africa's underwhelming performance, you know, ensured that didn't happen because the bookmakers obviously realized, yeah, sure, they only lost by two points, but on paper, you know, uh, and on the field are, are different. And I think that, you know, especially in that first half, I mean, it could have easily been more than seven behind in that first half. So, yeah, I would have loved to have seen a line under 10 and then back New Zealand, but over 10, I mean, maybe 10. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a tough number, That's the, but that's what I just, 
even with that 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 half point, I still can't back the the, yeah. the box. It's it's was, and I, it's uh, they could grind something out, surely. Yeah. But I just think the, the I was New I was really hoping for a bit of a, a bit of an overreaction to that narrow loss, um, but uh, it wasn't to be. I mean, as I alluded to earlier, I mean, I think. I think New Zealand were, were sort of sussing us out last week. And if they, if they plan well enough, especially to kind of um, counteract our kick and crash kind of gameplay, you know, um, I think I think they'll dominate the game. I mean, we didn't we didn't even see, you know, the Kiwis sort of expansive running game last week at all. Um, and I can assure you they haven't forgotten how to play like that. Um, I mean, if we if we miss sort of 30 percent of our tackles, um, I think we could easily lose by 14 points. So yeah, I, I just think I just think New Zealand were really very much in in sort of second gear last week, and um, yeah, I think we're going to have to play very 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 well to win this match. Yeah, I think it's it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's going to be a, a tough ask for for South Africa. And I'd look, I'd love to see them win, obviously, but oof, just mm. just 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 on the, how the whole series has gone so far, it just hasn't gone our way. Um, we've come up against uh, you know opposition that's that's out thinking us, that's out playing us. Um, you know, like as you said, our tactics are now looking a little bit dated. The World Cup mm. was what two years, two two years ago now. Uh, yeah. was, you know, we're still playing the same kind of rugby. Uh, yeah. We, I just I just think we've been kind of found out, and it's I'm not, I don't want to take anything away from the team. It's still a great team, but I, I just don't think we've got enough rugby under our belts at the moment. So so hopefully this is just more of a building building phase. But the thing is, they're not trying too much new. Uh, which is concerning, but yeah, my bet's yeah. going to be on on New Zealand minus ten and a half. Um, I, I think South Africa could possibly keep it close, but uh, it's I, I think I think we lose by maybe thirteen here. Mm, mm. Yeah, no, I think as you said, it's a combination of 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 South Africa and sort of underperforming and or, or, or look, tactics looking dated and New Zealand kind of really not looking like they had even started playing yet. Mm. Um, when they start when they start running the ball, I think there's going to be a problem. Yeah, for us. big trouble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, let's jump over to the EPL. We've There's not too much excite to get excited about. There's the, the big match, which is Liverpool versus City on Sunday. But other than that, we've got uh, United versus Everton. Not overly excited about that one. Uh, Everton might be some value, but I still think United probably going to bounce back mm-hmm. after that loss to Aston Villa. Chelsea, Southampton, not not too interested there. We've got uh, Newcastle heavy underdogs at Wolves, and uh, Spurs taking on Villa. I think they should pick up a, a comfortable win there. But let's talk about the big one: Liverpool versus City. Uh, Liverpool are underdogs for that one. Believe it or not, two point eight nine. City are, yeah. are, are favourites at two point three nine. And I, I actually fancy Liverpool for a result. Mm. Uh, I I don't like I don't like any of the bets. Maybe the draw no bet here at two point zero eight. But the double chances at one point five seven is just not not good enough for me. Yeah, I mean, I must say, when I if you if you just asked me what 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 the price was going to be on this match with our, you know beforehand, I would have said it would have been seventeen to ten apiece. So exactly, you know, coin flip mm. game. And the fact that that uh, City are marginal favourites to me is not quite right. Um, I mean, I, I it's obviously a, a really, really tough match to call, but I would rather have Liverpool in this situation. And then, look, let's be honest; they've looked, they've looked more consistent than City this so far this season. Um, played better in the Champions League last week, um, well, not last week, uh, yesterday. Um, it's, it's, yeah. I think, I think, uh, I think, I think getting Liverpool on the side, you know, either with the draw, with the draw no bet, or, or double chance would be the call here. Um, I don't know what you think about goals. Obviously, overs being favoured yeah, slightly there. I like overs. I like both teams to score, but it's, the odds are just not in my favour here. I mean, what? But both teams to score one point six, over one point seven. Eh, not good enough. Uh, you know, I, I think it's. I, I like the overs, but I think the. I think it's going to be a lot tighter than than yeah. than, than what we expect. Sure, and I mean, Rob, just just going back to to some some of the earlier games. I mean, are you? After you know Arsenal's uh, emphatic win over Spurs, <clears throat> um, uh, you know, would I mean, would you be wanting to back no. them against Brighton? No. I actually looked at that one. I looked at it and I was like, "Ooh, this is a this is a, Arsenal should win this one." Um, yeah. Well, oof. you know, I, I I tell you what, Brighton had more draws in the Premier League than any other team last season. Now that doesn't sound like basically a stat that you're going to sort of put on a, a trophy and you know uh, mm. put in, your, in your cabinet, but you know. If you have a tendency to eke out draws from classy opponents, and not necessarily oh. saying that we can classify <laughs> that's, Arsenal that's as quite generous <laughs> as, a, as a classy opponent yet, but you know my point being that Brighton, Brighton can, Brighton are pretty pretty good team at home, and uh, you know I think that they they can 
they can kind of uh, nullify uh, a lot of these bigger teams, shall we say? Yeah. So yeah, I certainly, um, I certainly wouldn't be rushing to to be back Arsenal here. Yeah. And I think I think the bookmakers have it right. I think a lot of people will be tempted by that sort uh, of fourteen yeah. to ten price on Arsenal, and I'm I'm, I'm not going there. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a good price on Arsenal. To be fair, I think the draw no bets a one point seven eight. I'm looking at it on, on Betway. I think that's okay if you're gonna if you can if you're gonna have a bet there. I think this one, as you said, could be a draw. I don't think Brighton are going to pull an upset here, um, mm. but I think this one is probably going to end with Arsenal one 0 two one maybe. Um, but I'm not confident enough on on either on either side here, kind of beating the other. So I think the drawn a bet's probably where I would go, but I'm I'm definitely not having a bet on this one. Um, mm. Even though even though I'm in in the back of my mind, I've got I've got Arsenal picking up a win there. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Spurs against Villa is is where there could be some value. I think uh, backing Spurs, uh, also with West Ham. Um, West Ham are taking on Brentford. West Ham playing at home. But sorry, let me. I'm getting ahead of myself. With uh, Spurs taking on Villa, I think you know that Spurs are a lot better than Villa. And yes, Villa picked up a, a massive win against United. Uh, they were somewhat lucky in that match, but you know, are they going to do it two weeks in a row? Yes. Spurs aren't united, but this is really a spot where they should be looking to pick up all three points, especially after losing to Arsenal last week. Sure. Um, and 2.1 is pretty big on Spurs at home against Aston Villa. That's yeah, that's some, that that's just 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 based on the odds. Uh, I fancy Spurs there. And uh, then the other one was West Ham versus Brentford, and I fancy West Ham to to pick up a win against Brentford there. Sorry, Hollywood bets. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, sure. I mean, you got to go against them sometime, right? Yeah, and uh, any any value that you've seen other than other than what we've what we've discussed? I really, I really don't see any. I must be honest. I think this is. I really don't have any standout bets across the board this week. So, yeah, it's quite disappointing. But um, I was actually going to, you know, say that right at the beginning of the podcast. I must say, I've just nothing inspires me. Like I was looking forward to backing New Zealand. Didn't get the number I wanted. Nothing jumps out of me in the, in the Premier League. Uh, maybe Liverpool, I fancy a little bit, but also nothing strong there. I, I must say, it's, it's, it's a bit of a tough card this week. Yeah, it's a kind of betting apathy. is just, it's, there's not too much going on that I'm too much to get excited about either. Uh, yeah, so I think that's what we're going to, well, before we end the podcast, I actually do want to have a quick chat about Pure Bet. Um, Simon, you did a preview for Betting Guide. I popped up a video yeah. on, on BSB and we did a, a write-up there as well. Mm. Uh, what what do you think of them? What are your thoughts on, on them? They've got a, a, a 100% deposit match up to 1,000 Rand. They're running on BetConstruct. They've got casino yeah. games. Uh, I did say in that video they don't have lucky numbers, but I did speak to them after that video and they said they're getting lucky numbers approved by the board. So yes. that should be coming soon. So quick, slight correction yeah. there. Uh, even though at the time when I recorded, they weren't offering it, but uh, that's just something for, for those who do want to bet lucky numbers. Uh, the only thing that I find missing from their site is is horse racing. Yeah, that's that's right. I mean, uh, they're also, I mean, right now, um, and it's still early days, as I said, there is that awesome, uh, you know, first deposit bonus up to 1,000, which is pretty standard, but always nice. And then um, a nice little... Um, little uh bonus with the with the with the free or a nice little plus with the free bet um the 25 free bet is you actually only have to deposit 10. so you can actually deposit 10 and get 25 um as as your as your free bet and then you can um still claim the 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 deposit bonus of of up to a thousand um yeah it's a nice site it's got a it's got a really nice colorful interface um, easy to use. Um, it's obviously if you're familiar with GBets, you'll be familiar with uh, with the Bet Construct software. Um, so it, it, it is nice to use. Um, they've got a big selection of of, of sports, both pre-match and, and live sports. Um, quite a lot of deposit options, including vouchers, mm, which is very important. Which is uh, something I think a lot of bookies overlook these days. When yeah. Match. So it's 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 a nice book. I must say it's a, it's uh, it's 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 got a, it's got a nice. A good it's got a good mobile betting experience too um you know it's as i said it, it's, it's easy to use and um a nice selection of live games they've got all the evolution games and um you know a couple of other providers too of course bet construct being you know the platform they use and azugi so um yeah live games players or casino players will will also be happy with with the product offering not just not just sports betters yeah, I just I just hope they they do well because the market is very crowded at the moment, and it's I think it's quite mm. a, a difficult time to enter the South African betting market. 
Um, even even with a new product, even as as good as Bit Construct is, uh, the, the South African market is, is very picky and it's very iffy. So so all the best to to Purebet. Hopefully they stick around. Uh, they they seem to have all the right ingredients. I've 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 played a couple of bets there. I've played some of the live games there. I've made deposits. I'm yet to make a withdrawal. Um, I tend to to go bust or, or withdraw a lot. <laughs> you know, this is usually what happens. I'm not I'm not all yeah. that interested in withdrawing anything under a, a certain amount. But I probably should just to test it out. But uh, yeah, they've been pretty communicative or with 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 us since we've kind of done reviews and, and whatnot on them. So go check them out, purebet.co.za or head over to Best Sports Betting or Betting Guide and have a look for the review under the review section there. But guys, thanks for tuning into this episode. Hopefully we hopefully we can have some, some nice winners. Uh, I don't know if you have a bet, best bet this week, Simon. Have you any, anything? <laughs> yeah, as I said, it, it's, 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 it, it doesn't look good for me because... I kind of the bets I like are just not at the at the, at the odds I would have liked to take. But I suppose um, I think I think Liverpool on the draw no bet, um, which is going to be slightly bigger than even money. Um, I think is probably where I would go. Um, uh, I like New Zealand, but I just don't know if I like New Zealand mm. at more than ten points. Um, you know, the minus maybe if, if New Zealand was was somehow nine point five minus nine point five, I would fancy them. Yeah, I I, so I like New Zealand. It's a tough week. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with New Zealand just because there's really not that out much else that I'm yeah. too confident about this week. Uh, I'm gonna take that shop around as 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 Simon said. If you can get nine and a half, take it. Uh, Ten and a half, I'm gonna reluctantly take. I'm probably gonna have to take that. I don't know if I if I have an account that's open somewhere that's gonna give me uh, gonna give me that uh, nine and a half. Hopefully, I can find one, and I don't want to take too much juice as well. So, yeah. you know, uh, it's going to need to be at, uh, you know, 1.85 around there if I can find it. Yeah. But otherwise, I think 10.5 is okay. It's not it's not great, but I think you, you're you going to have a, a bet that's going to run there. And uh, then we're going to watch South Africa beat, beat, beat New Zealand by 20 or something <laughs> like that. Um, of course. Well, I suppose that's always the good thing about, you know, backing... Betting on betting on uh, uh, against your your home team is that you're kind of always going to be happy for some reason. It's, it's because great. Your team won or either it's, you're it's great when you're betting against your home team and the other side is on the plus because then, then it's fine. Yes. But when it's on the yes. minus, you know they can still lose and your right. bet will lose. So it's just a right. double whammy, and then it's just yeah. then you just get angry. You know? <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. guys, thanks for for tuning into this episode. Hopefully the box can. Well, not for our bet's sake, but hopefully for the country's pride sake and pull, a, pull off a bit of an upset this weekend. And uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one, guys. Cheers.